guys and welcome to Program Artist. Today we're going to talk about the BFS algorithm. Have you ever wondered how apps like Google Maps find the shortest path for you to take when you want to go to your favorite restaurant or to visit your friends? This is exactly what I'm going to talk about in this episode and in the next few episodes. I don't really know how Google Maps algorithms work and what exactly they do, but I'm pretty sure the stuff that I'll show you are the basics for that algorithm. BFS or Bread First Search is an algorithm that deals with the problem of finding the shortest route between two points where all the hops between two points are of the same value. So let's start by describing the problem that we have. We have point A, this is our starting point, and we have point B, and this is the point that we want to get to. Now, there are other points, which I will call nodes, okay? And these nodes are places that we can visit while going to node B, and there are connections from some nodes to others, while we don't have connections from other nodes. So, for instance, there are three paths, or well, maybe more paths, that we can take from point A to point B. We, we, we can take this path, which looks pretty long, we can take this path, we can take this path, or we can take even this path. Okay, we will go here, return, and go there. So the idea of this algorithm, the BFS, is to find the shortest path between node A and node B. And let's add a, f a few more nodes and edges so it will be more confusing and not straightforward just from looking at it. So let's see how we can solve this problem of finding the shortest path from A to B. So in order to solve this problem, we will actually solve a harder problem and by solving that problem, we will also solve the problem that we are interested in. So instead of solving the shortest path from A to B, let's solve the problem of finding the shortest path from A to each and every node in our graph. Okay, and uh, let's add some other nodes just for the sake of it. Okay, and we'll have some nodes that we will not exit from. Okay, so how this algorithm works? Well, basically it says that let's start from node A and we know that for node A the distance from getting from node A to itself is zero. We need no ups for these edges to get from node A to, to itself. And what we're gonna do next, we're gonna look at all the immediate neighbors of node A, which are these, this, this, and these nodes, and we will, we will say that the distance between A and these nodes are 1. So we can get from node A to these nodes with, with one hop using one edge. Now the next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna look at the next layer of the neighbors. So the neighbors of the neighbors, which are this node, this, 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 and these nodes. The node that we can get from all the nodes <coughs> with the distance one. And now we will update these nodes to be equal to two. So this one is obvious, two. This one is also obvious, this is obvious. And now we can look and see that the neighbor of this node it is also this node, but this node is already has a number assigned to it and it is smaller than our number 2. So what we're gonna do, we're simply gonna skip it. Okay, so we're gonna update all the nodes except the nodes that already have a position, already have a distance, sorry. So this node we're gonna skip and when I'm, we're looking at this node, we have this neighbor, this neighbor is a new one and following the same logic. Now, what we're gonna do, again, we're gonna look at the next level of the neighbors, we're gonna put it here, three and three here, and the next level will be four and four, ok? 
okay? So now we know that the shortest distance from A to every node is like for this one is 3, for this one is 4 and for B is 4. And what we can do, we can track back the route from B to A. So for example, when we put here the 4, for, we put it based on, the, on this node. So we can say that this is the edge we need to take. Okay? And when we put this 3, we use this node. When we've put this 2, we've used this node. And we've put, when we've put this 1, we've used this edge. So now we can see a route of 4 from node A to node B. Okay? So this is the main idea behind this algorithm. And now let's see with a little more detail how we knew to go to the le next level of the neighbors. So now we have another graph. And so we can see here is node A and here is node B. And I've marked all other nodes with uh, small English letters. So the capital A is the starting point, the capital B is the end point that we want to reach and all the other nodes are small English letters. So how uh, does the algorithm work? Well, first of all, every node will have a few uh, things that he will remember. He will remember the shortest path from A, he will remember how he got that number, which neighbor gave him that number, and we will also keep track of all the nodes that we saw and didn't yet update their neighbors. So let's start and you will see what I mean. So we'll start by use, uh, assigning the node A0 and putting an A in a list of nodes that we haven't yet uh, updated their neighbors. So for now this is only node A. So now we take a node from this list and this is A. We take it out and we go through all of its neighbors and update their distance being the distance of A, that's 0, plus 1, unless they're already been updated. So we update here 1 and 1 and we put them inside the list of nodes that we saw but we didn't update their neighbors. Okay, so we finished with this node A and we now take the node A, the smallest node A of uh, of that list. Oh, and by the way, we mark that we arrived to this node from here. So now we took the node A and we update all its neighbors and it is C. We put here 1, we say it arrived from here and we put the node C here. The next node we're, we will take will be B and we will update all its neighbors to be 2 from here, also 2 from here and F and G will be inside this list, okay? The next node that we will go to is C and now we will update, sorry, it should be 2, we will update the neighbors of C uh, and we, will, we won't update the node F because we already visited it, so we will update D being 3 that we arrived from here and we will put the node D here, okay? Next node is F and we'll update the neighbors of f. This we already updated. This is going to be 3, we arrived from here and we update h. This node we already updated. Next node, g, okay, this updated. 3, arrived from here, put k here, okay. Next node will be d, d is 4 from here, let's put e here. Next node is h, h is 3, so we'll update this to be 4 from here and put i here, k again, 4 from here, okay, and we'll put j here, next one is e, e is 5 here, we arrive from here, and l, the next node, and uh, did I forget anything? No. Okay, and now we'll take i. We'll update all its no uh, neighbors, so we'll update this to be 5 from here. This is already updated, this is already updated, 
and now we arrive to node B to, with distance 5 and we arrive from here. So now we already know the, sh the shortest distance from A to B is 5. And how to find the path? Well, we simply need to go through the arrows from B to A. So B is pointing at J. J is pointing at K. K is pointing at G. G is pointing at B. And B is pointing at A. So all we need to do now is reverse this path and we have the path of A going to small b, going to small g, going to k, j and k. And sorry, k, j and b. My mistake. Okay, so this is the path. This is the shortest path and its length is 5. And you can see that this path is the length of 6 and this is even longer okay well actually it also six what you can also notice is the list of neighbors that we are listing here is already sorted by the distance so let's just visualize it so here it will be zero okay the distance from a to a is zero for a and b is one for c f and g is two c f and g is two d will be three H will be also 3, K is 3, E is 4, I is 4, J is 4, L is 5. Okay, and we stopped there because we got to B. So, as you can see, when we take the, the first node from that list, we're actually taking the node with the smallest distance from A and we are continuing to add the distance to its neighbors. So we will see in the next episode when we will talk about Dijkstra. This is the idea that we will want to implement in more complicated uh, graph. So for now this is enough and you can see that the BFS found the shortest path from A to B when all the distances between each and every node are the same. Okay, here I assumed it is one. One more thing that I want to talk about is the complexity of this algorithm. So when we went over this graph, we went over each edge only once. When we traveled from, let's say from node B to its neighbors, we used each edge once. And we used every node twice. One time to update the data and one time to pop it from that list. So we used it twice, well, maybe three or four times if you consider popping and uh, pushing to that list, by, but it is, for each node, it is a constant number of times. So the complexity of this algorithm is big O of nodes and edges. Okay, so it is linear to the size of the graph. Okay, with every node you add and every edge you add, you are simply in making this problem that much uh, harder but not like if you're adding one node it will be harder uh, in a quadratic manner okay only in a linear manner for the nodes and the edges you have watched an episode about the bfs algorithm let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below you can watch more algorithm videos by clicking over here or you can trust youtube to know what you really want to see and click over here if you want to watch more cognitive videos check out my channel and feel free to subscribe see you later on chronomarks